All right, let's get back to the breaking news. The Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein has just resigned. His resignation comes as the Attorney General William Barr's scheduled testimony in front of the House Judiciary Committee uh, on Thursday morning might actually be unraveling. Let's bring back our political experts for some analysis. Uh, Jackie, first of all, let's talk about Rod Rosenstein. We all have the letter now. Uh, his resignation goes into effect May 11th. Yeah, and as we were just joking about, this is... Uh, almost the second time he's resigned. Um, but Rosenstein has been really an enigma throughout the Trump presidency. Really difficult guy to understand, especially as more and more anecdotes have come out from behind the scenes. You know, he's a guy who uh, volunteered potentially to wear a wire to um, record what the president was doing behind the scenes. But then he's also the same person uh, who the Washington Post just reported last week was uh, also tried to mollify Trump um, with in terms of the Mueller report saying that he was going to be able to land the plane here. Um, the line that really stands out to me here is uh, him quoting John Ashcroft for, um, you know, conducting, uh, overseeing a professional Justice Department free from politics, right? This comes right after Trump called the FBI scum on Saturday. So, cops. Um, you know, yeah. despite this letter, uh, I, I'm not sure Rosenstein has done the most in order to um, make sure that the Justice Department is isolated from, from politics, as he's so claiming. Here. I'm not sure anybody can, but it does seem that uh, he offered some parting advice for the president. He said, quote, we ignore fleeting distractions and focus our attention on the things that matter because a republic that endures is not governed by the news cycle. I almost feel like the subtext there is like, put down your phone totally. occasionally, Stop Mr. tweeting. President. Yeah. Uh, one other thing in the um, covering the idea, covering up the idea potentially that he's leaving early. I, this, I love when they do. The median tenure of a deputy attorney general is 16 months, and few serve longer than two years, which is essentially, I'm not being forced out. Everything's cool. I'm leaving when they basically leave. But I, Jack, I just, Jackie's point about him being an enigma is fascinating because he is the guy who establishes the special counsel. He is the guy who stays and kind of protects the special counsel broadly, Don McGahn also. But he's also the guy who, when Bill Barr gives the press conference before the Mueller report, an hour and a half before the Mueller report comes out, yeah. he's the guy Stand doing down. this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Standing next to him. And Barr says, uh, Deputy Attorney General Ro Rosenstein and I decided jointly not to pursue obstruction. So. Right. You can, in some ways, you can make what you want of him. You can make him a hero or a, or a devil either way in this story. But he's one thing you can't dispute. He's absolutely at the center of this. And now that it's concluded, at least that part of it, he's leaving. This is not hugely surprising. Yeah, let's not forget, he was often uh, either directly or indirectly attacked by the president. Yeah, I, I agree, though, with Chris. It, he's either a hero or a goat, depending on yeah. what you look at. Uh, the tone of this letter is so lofty and opaque as to be almost absurd, Wolf. So let's just talk about two things. One, in terms of what you just said, right, the special counsel was allowed to complete mm -hmm. his work, and Rod Rosenstein had a role in that. So perhaps he did play a key uh, role in having justice brought out at least that far. On the other hand, the way he handled Wolf the firing of Jim Comey, authoring the May 9th memo that gave uh, Hillary Clinton as a plausible reason why Jim Comey should be let go by a Republican president. I think he got rolled by the, the Trump White House. I don't by know any other way to see it. By the president the himself? I don't know any other way to see it. So again, go. hero or goat, I don't know. Hey, we just, the thing about him is he's so central and yet we don't really, and there's been so much reporting about him, but he doesn't, with the exception of the speech last week, he doesn't talk publicly all that much. And so there's so much that we don't know because, well, he was alleged to have offered to wear a wire bringing up the 25th Amendment. He, they say he was joking. There's reporting that says he wasn't joking. You don't, we don't really, you can't pin him down because we just, he's not, Waiting, I guess, the Rosenstein memoir. I mean, it probably is not that far say, away, yes. but like... There's I a mean, book, I think, yeah. in the future. Let's, Maybe see we'll learn. let's see if he testifies right. before the House uh, and or Senate uh, Judiciary Committee some point, sometime down the road. Uh, uh, speaking of testimony before the House Judiciary Committee, uh, you just heard Congressman Steve Cohn say that uh, the Attorney General might be chicken to go before the committee on Thursday because staff lawyers will be asking some questions. Right. Uh, of the things that are going to scare Bill Barr... I don't think Steve Cohen's comments are the ones to do it, calling him out and chicken and getting in a name-calling contest. But I think uh, Jerry Nadler seemed pretty uh, certain that a subpoena would be coming Bill Barr's way if he could not indeed uh, reach an agreement about, about coming and testifying before the House Judiciary Committee. And then, as you know, we could see this potentially end up in the courts. Um, this is 
uh, part potentially if if Barr says I'm not coming, I don't like your rules. I think this goes into a list of things that the Trump administration has now going, where they're just going to try and stonewall this new Democratic majority in the House. So. Yeah, and I think you know what is so fascinating to me also about Rosenstein's exit is that speech that he gave last week yeah. to the I think the Police Association in New York, which it's which really um, you know he sort of unleashed this Pandora's box, begging Democrats to subpoena everyone involved with the Mueller report after he said it was just the tip of the iceberg in terms of Russian interference, which should really be the priority for most of the federal government going and into which 2020. Which Steve Cohen noted in that in, right. in your interview it, with Exactly. Him. And so I sort of feel like this is, you know, the Trump administration almost a double dog daring Congress to con to continue to call them in, but you know there is really little incentive, I think, for the White House to cooperate here after they've are after the Mueller report's already been rolled out and they've already shown their appearances of cooperation. We're going to have a lot more on all of this. Everybody, stand by.